Hello everyone and welcome to another spectacular game from round 4 of the 2021 FIDE World Cup. It's Etienne Bakro versus Pavel Ponkratov and uh, it was not easy choosing a game to show. Uh, there were so many great games um, uh, uh, being played uh, t today. Uh, there was... Um... Well, I've had a couple of uh, guesses which one would be the most interesting and this one, it, it simply wasn't even a question. Like, uh, I thought, uh, okay, the, uh, Vidit, uh, Vidit had a great game against uh, Xiong. Uh, there was the miraculous escape by, by, by Dubo versus Hesipenko. But this one, I think it's really the best game of... Uh, uh, of uh, today, uh, even better than uh, than um, uh, the, the previous game, Magnus versus Wojtaszek that we've shown, because it's simply simply really really awesome. Uh, the, that one was super complicated, but this one I, I think you're going to enjoy more. And um, uh, sorry, in the previous video I thought it was uh, Wojtaszek who offered the draw. It was in fact Magnus who offered the draw. So uh, once again, apologies for that. Uh, now getting to this uh, game, uh, like I said, Bakro versus Ponkratov. Uh, let's check it out. Really an awesome one. So uh, e4 and uh, Ponkratov of replies with e6. He goes for the French defense and it seems like this is becoming a trend. Uh, if you face a Frenchman you have to go for, for the French defense. Uh, we have d4, d5, knight to c3 and now bishop to b4. The winner variation, uh, sometimes even called the, 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 the Nimzovic. Uh, we have knight to e2, uh, not the most popular option. e5 is by far the most popular but knight to e2 also played very much. Uh, we have d captures on e4, also uh, called the, the Alekhin Marozzi Gambit as uh, now you win a pawn but it's very hard to keep up to keep the pawn because now white plays a3 and now you have to go back with the bishop and the white wins back the pawn you don't have to you could also give up your uh, bishop and after knight captures uh defend it but you can't really defend it with knight f6 then bishop g5 again you're gonna lose this pawn there's no no uh saving this pawn and if you try something like f5 then you get to save the pawn and then we have the uh, you know, the Alejandro Marozzi Gambit in, in its full glory, but no one in their right mind would play this uh, with black in a classical game in 2021. Uh, I could be wrong, of course, I am oftentimes, but uh, I don't think so. So instead, after a3, we have bishop back to e7, and now just knight captures on e4, uh, on e4 wins back the pawn, knight f6, and now queen to d3. Developing while defending, we have knight to c6, and now bishop to e3. Uh, and here there is one game, uh, Gedeon Barca uh, played it against uh, Laos Portish um, uh, back in 1951 and Portish was able to win that game very nicely. Uh, it's a year that you know very well if you've been following this channel for quite some time now, as we all know the great, uh, well, you know what I'm going to say, of 1959. Uh, but if not, uh, you know, uh, feel free to check it out. It's one of the greatest tournaments ever. So here instead we have castles and it is now as of move 8 that we have a completely new game. So let's see how Bakro uh, deals with this. We have queenside castles uh, and now knight to g4. Trying to take advantage of the dark square bishop's weird position, but uh, white doesn't really care about this. White just plays h4. And now if you capture the bishop, which is usually a good idea, then white gets the strength in its center. And uh, well, uh, he can just continue attacking here on the king side, which is what you want to do when you have castles of opposite uh, on opposite sides of the board. Uh, it's usually a race on who will... Uh, get to attack first so maybe not allowing this is the way to go so here instead we have f5 dislodging this knight knight the g5 now uh, and here h6 uh, now how do you how do you uh, play this uh, well your king set is already quite open you already played f5 maybe h6 isn't the way to go but it's very dangerous keeping this knight here the other knight is coming to f4 then you're going to have a lot of problems guarding this e6 pawn the queen can move also join the attack so here black just wants to get rid of the knight right away so here knight back to f3 and now bishop to d6 uh, we have g3 now not allowing any uh, f4 action by black and rook to b8 now here black is saying all right i'm not interested in a slow a5 b5 uh, pushing uh, maneuvers uh, i'm gonna play uh, b5 right away so here rook to b8 prepares this we have c4 now kind of stopping b5 and now black plays uh, b5 all the same so if you wanted you could play something like b pawn to b6 and try to you know play it a bit slower but black is not interested in that he just attacks this c4 pawn and now if you capture this uh, and you could you are defending the pawn but if you capture it then knight uh, for example to a5 bishop is coming to d7 you're going to attack the b5 pawn and this is not uh, something that uh, white wants to do even if uh, this was good for white and i mean you can't always calculate all the way uh, it's very unprincipled 
uh, because uh, you, you should always remember this in your own games. If you're attacking on the king side, which white definitely is trying to do, uh, you want to keep the center and the queen side closed. So you don't want to open up uh, lines uh, anywhere except uh, where you're attacking. So here, white of course plays c5, a very principled decision. We have bishop to e7 and now knight to f4. So white slowly but surely improving the, the, the uh, his setup. Uh, and now b4, black also wastes no time. He attacks that queen side right away. Uh, if you wanted, you could try maybe bishop to f6. That bishop will be very useful in the future. Uh, so maybe something to consider. But black says, nope, we're going to push b4 right away. As often, that is the correct move. So here we have a4, another principal decision. Even though uh, the engine kind of likes a captures on b4, but it's not a human thing to do. You want to keep the queen side close. Uh, no, uh, no questions asked. So here, b3 by black. Uh, and now comes queen to c3. You get the queen away from the d file because now, well, the queen uh, and the rook are on the, uh, occupying the same file, and you always have to worry about the d5 or the knight coming to e5. Then, if captures, you get captures, opens up the d file. So, something that might be useful for white. So, here we have knight back to f6. Now, the knight is uh, more than interested in coming to d5, and now bishop to b5. And this is a very strong move, but also. Uh, a great move for white because you never really got a chance to develop your light square bishop and now you get to develop it with tempo to, to uh, well to a very nice square uh, and here knight to e4 attacking white's queen and the problem here is if you try to defend it then the move we discussed knight to e5 just wins the game for white there's no de defending this for black problem is if, if you try knight captures on e5 uh, then we just capture back and then this is under attack this is under attack this is under attack twice and there's not much you can do if knight e5 just knight captures and you're down too much material if you try to gain back material then knight f6 check wins the queen and you are now dead lost so after bishop to b5 we have knight to e4 attacking the queen on c3 and now queen captures on b3 so very nicely done uh, the bishop now guards as uh, you know serves as a shield here uh, and also the e6 pawn is now um uh, attacked twice so black would very much enjoy playing a6 but it, it wouldn't really work yes you kind of uh, can't move the bishop but you don't even need to knight captures on e6 is and the white um, white's position is just much better if you capture it then we capture with check and then we can capture on a6 and if you don't uh well what what else is there there is a kind of a very cool line for black which goes knight a5 you attack white's queen and now after queen to a2 because you kind of want to want to keep this pin there's really nothing better other than capturing captures captures king h8 and then we again pick up the a6 pawn and uh it doesn't matter that uh, black has a rook here we have a pawn and bishop here so nicely nicely protecting everything so instead after queen captures on b3 we have knight to a5 right away by Ponkratov, and now queen to a2 still attacking this pawn here and now only now a6 uh the thing is if you try something like rook to f6 maybe to keep an eye on the pawn then again knight to e5 extremely unpleasant uh you don't really you don't really have a move here for black if you play a6 now for example bishop to c6 and what do you play you can never capture here because then knight captures attacks the queen and the rook and if you try to play any move so it doesn't really matter let's say bishop to d6 we just play f3 and uh, trap the knight there's no saving this knight if knight captures on g3 rook g1 and again the knight is trapped so uh, this is attacked this is attacked there, there's nothing you can do here so uh, after queen to a2 we have the immediate a6 by black and now comes uh, knight captures on e6 as planned uh, you could also improve just with bishop to c4 but it doesn't really matter knight captures on e6 we have bishop captures and now queen captures on e6 we have king to h8 and now uh, white could capture on a6 but at the end uh, uh, didn't seem to, to like this so he just played bishop to d7 completely uh, locking out uh, uh, all of black's pieces but allowing something that I think he he was kind of trying to bait so this uh, this is de definitely a bait as black went for it so here bishop to f6 a move you definitely want to include at any point in this game it would seem but black played rook to f6 and now Etienne got exactly what he wanted uh, because now there's only one good move for white you don't really have all that many moves uh, um, uh, because your bishop hangs if you move the queen even if you uh, put the queen here we can just play c6 and again it's a uh, it's a very 
uh, well, losing position for white. So here, uh, after this rook to f6, we have knight to e5, and this is just beautiful. Now, uh, rook captures queen kind of is the strongest move, but it's a move that leaves uh, black in a very difficult position. Knight f7 check, king g8, now we pick up the queen. Knight captures attacking the rook here with the bishop and the knight. So here, uh, the, the rook would move, and now, for example, knight e6, and we... Um, continue playing this game but it's uh it's definitely white who's better here uh no no questions um uh, about it it's a very very difficult position for black so instead after knight to e5 uh black did not like this uh you know uh, even though you're surviving, you're not really enjoying your position. He played the rook captures on b2. And this is a great move unless white finds a, a, a really awesome refutation. So feel free to pause the video. And this is only the first of three pause the video moments that we're going to have uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. And of course, try to find the, 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 the winning idea for white. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on going for that head headshot immediately. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen captures on f6. That's that's the winning idea. It was not played in the game, but it's uh, it's such a cool move that you you simply have to play it. The problem is, uh, and I think this is why it wasn't played, because if you accept the queen, then it's uh, perfectly fine. Of course, we win this very easily. Knight f7 check. We're going to play king g8, knight captures on d8. Uh, and you don't really have anything here with black. Your rook here is hanging. You have to move the rook somewhere. Rook before. Now knight c6 attacks the knight and the rook. And after captures, captures, well, we have this position where white is simply up a full rook. Uh, the problem why I think it wasn't played this queen captures on f6 idea is that, uh, well, bishop captures isn't forced. You also have this rook to b1 trick. And now uh, the problem is if the rook is accepted, then we get queen to b8 check. And now the queen might find all of these nice squares to continue checking the white king. And uh, it's uh, just super ugly. So the only way for white to survive would be queen to b6. And then, for example, c captures. We keep the big file closed and we continue playing this game. So it's still better for white, but very, very very ugly. Uh, one thing you have to do after queen captures on f6 and rook to b1 check is ignore the rook. King c2, and now of course black will try to sacrifice the rook again. King d3, we're going to play rook b3, rook b3 check, king e2, and now after uh, another check, king f3, and the king is very safe here, uh, but uh, you know, uh, who, 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 who's going to see that? Uh, and of course, if the queen is accepted, again, we go into this captures and again, we're simply up too much material. So uh, congratulations to everyone who found rook captures on f6, but it was not played in this game here. White accepted the challenge. He played king captures on b2 and now queen to b8 check. King to a3, luckily there is no checkmate, the queen is guarding the b3 square, and now rook captures on e6. There's really nothing better for... for uh, uh, for you to do so uh, uh rook captures queen and now bishop captures on e6 so now black is up a full queen but how do you how do you uh continue from here the bishop still prevents checkmate so what can we do queen to b6 let's try to get rid of that bishop and maybe deliver checkmate so bishop to f7 still keeping an eye on that b3 square and now queen to f6 so what do you play here? Uh, here we have a move that's really, really incredible. <laughs> and even though it seems like black stopped all of white's attacking ideas, uh, black prevails and finds another one. Now, this is not maybe the best move in the position, uh, but it's the best move uh, considering the position if there's such a thing. So here black played bishop to g5. And this is just uh, amazing. This is... Uh, this is what uh, Rashid would do, this is what Nejmedina would do, this is what Tal would do, and this is what uh, Etienne Bakro did. Uh, what do you play here? It's uh, it's so ugly that <laughs> you, you don't really have a choice. Your, your queen is trapped. The queen has nowhere to go. All of these squares are covered by, by uh, uh, other pawns or pieces. So capturing the bishop is the only way to go, unless it isn't. Uh, feel free to pause the video for a second time and try to find the only defensive idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, and uh, I, I think Meadow is here. I have to let him in. Sorry about that. Medo is looking for his walk, even though he already had one. Uh, 
Yeah, but congratulations to everyone who found this as it's not uh, that easy to find. So capturing the bishop right away isn't the way to go. Ca uh, capturing the pawn on c5, that's the way to go. So congratulations to everyone who found this because now you actually survive. Now after uh, the captures on c5, you have to capture the bishop. Otherwise, there's simply too many black pieces that will allow you to... Uh, check the check the white king and also you've eliminated this pawn so the queen now does have an escape square so uh, you will have to capture it the captures now we're going to play queen captures on e5 and now uh white uh well there's really nothing better than uh going for a perpetual here king h7 check now a bishop to g8 and now we have to settle for a perpetual here because if we insist on playing then we get h5 and then it's white who wins so king g5 and now of course f4 check uh we win back the queen king g4 captures here and now of course white is up too much material so after this bishop to g5 move black missed bishop captures on c5 black played knight captures on g5 and now uh this is all that white needed h captures on g5 now of course the h pawn is pinned you cannot capture with the pawn so queen captures on g5 and now rook to b1 now the rook is coming into the attack we have g6 black um, has to make some breathing room for the king here even though the g6 pawn will pa uh, fall at some point so rook to b8 check king to h7 and now comes rook to d1 uh, this is a really cool move because it completely uh you know removes all of black's counterplay there is not a single square for this queen so the pawn covers these two squares uh the knight covers uh, g4 uh, this is covered by the pawn this is covered by the rook now this is covered by the rook so the, there's no way for the queen to join the attack uh, if, if there is such a thing for black here so bishop to f6 was played but now uh what do you play well bishop captures on g6 of course we have king to g7 and now again there is only one winning move for white uh so feel free to pause the video for the third time and finish this uh, incredible masterpiece while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that something needs to be done about this all this tension here, because if uh, then the defender of the bishop is removed, then we just lose the bishop, obviously not with the king, but with the queen. Uh, so you have to deal with that somehow. And here the only move that wins is bishop to f7. Now the point is that if black now removes the defender, now we have this incredible rook to g8 check and that uh, will remove the queen. King captures on f7, rook captures on g5, and now of course if h captures, d captures e, and of course we have a rook against a knight in a completely winning endgame. There's, there's no way uh, you, you will ever get out of this. So instead, after bishop to f7, we have king to h7. You can't really go knight grabbing here. So bishop to g8 check, king to g7, now bishop d5. Again, threatening the same thing. So king to h7, and now rook to g8, winning a lot of very important squares here. Like we said, the queen doesn't really have all that, uh, all that uh, you know, anywhere to go to. Uh, you could go to h5, but it's, again, such such an ugly square. Not a lot to do there for, for the black queen. Uh, and if you try to give back some material, it's still lost. I mean, it's a knight uh, and rook against the bishop and knight, and you are up a pawn, of course. It's a completely winning endgame. So instead, after rook to g8, we have bishop to g7 blocking this attack. And now comes rook to e8. So what do you play here? Now the threat is this very, very annoying bishop to, to g8. Uh, and well, this is covered by the knight, so you're going to have to go under the mask. Uh, and uh, well, then it's just going to be a very, very happy, you know, a windmill action time. So here, black finally eliminates one of the attackers. We have rook captures on e5 and queen g4. So now the queen gets some squares, uh, attacks this rook on d1, but now rook d3. Again, not a single square for this queen to, to join the attack. We have f4 now, trying to create some chances here, but now king to b4. Look at this beauty. Even some uh, poetic action uh, at the end of the game because the knight is now trapped. The bishop covers the, the escape squares. So here we have f captures on g3, but now white just played rook to e7 check. And it was in this position uh, on move 44 that Pavel Ponkratov resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, here, if you continue and you can never go, um, uh, you, you can never go, for example, to, to g6 because then rook captures on g3 just wins the queen on the spot. So you'd have to play king to h8. 
but then we force the king there. Rook e8 to check, king h7, and now bishop to e4 check, and now you have to go to the g file, uh, king g7, now we're going to play rook captures and g3, win the queen, that's it. Queen captures, pawn captures, and to make matters worse, the knight still has no squares, the bishop covers uh, all the escape squares, so it's just a, uh, a very, very sad knight, it's been there for like forever, and it didn't really, you know, it was supposed to be a great attacker, but, you know, it's a very, very sad. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, after rook t7 check, uh, Ponkrato resigned and uh, an amazing victory for round one in uh, for Etienne Bakro, uh, who will of course uh, tomorrow uh, need, need only a draw to, to advance into the to the next round of the FIDE World Cup. So incredible game! Uh, thank you so much for suggesting it, everyone. Uh, but there there were so many people you know uh, posting about it. Uh, it was uh, it was really a no brainer. But uh, like I said, if you have any any more uh, of the games that you would like to see, I may have time tomorrow before the the next round starts to to show another one. Uh, for the moment, it's either Estipenko versus Dubov or Vidit versus Xiong. But do do keep suggesting, and we'll see. Also, use the comment section. You know that that also works. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Stephen Wentworth, Matthew Parker, Tom Darrell, Richard Campbell, and Robert Walker for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And sorry about a bit of a longer video. See you soon.